Welcome to another Natron tutorial. In this video, we're going to be playing with the Roto tool and masking. So if we go to the draw nodes, click on Roto, we can create a Roto node. It's tied to our viewer. I'm just going to resize this a little bit so we can see our viewer space. So with this Roto tool, it gives us some extra toolbars up here on the top and on the side. And by default, we have this Bezier tool selected, or Bezier, it's like a French word. And so with this tool, we can just, anywhere we click, it will create points. If we left click and hold and drag, it creates a curved point. And then we can just like close it and we've got this closed shape that we can now move around. If we look over on, on the properties of the Roto tool, you'll notice the red, green, and blue channels are not selected. So we could select, we could have them be selected and we've created this white or any color, but by default, it's just alpha. So it's just drawing in transparency. Um, so we can see what the alpha is by just viewing the alpha channel only. So it appears white here, but it's really just like uh, an alpha drawn over top of transparency. And uh, so this will make more sense. I'm gonna delete this layer. Well, first of all, let's draw another layer actually. And then we'll, we'll bring in an image and interact with this, uh, this roto that we've drawn. If we right click under these tools and go to ellipse tool, we can just left click and hold and draw an ellipse. We can also do a rectangle, left click and hold and we have a rectangle. And all of these have different settings we can draw. There's a little line here that you can actually feather out the transparency. So you can see that's like fading into the black. So we can fade just this edge. If we wanna fade the whole thing, I'll hit Control Z, this entire ellipse or circle. If we go to shape, we can actually just feather the whole thing like this uniformly. Um, so we have three different objects that we've drawn on this on this one roto node, and they all appear on these different layers. So this this uh, we can just select it and hit the delete key, and we can delete so that we only have if I want to delete the ellipse, we delete, and so we just have these different layers. So I'm going to delete this one as well, and I'm going to now I'm going to draw in a uh, or let's read in an image. So I have this image of me fishing that we've looked at before and I'm going to pipe it into the roto tool and then have the roto tool go into the viewer and then from the uh, from here we don't see anything uh, why don't we see anything ah so the reason we're not seeing anything is because we're viewing only the alpha so we need to change this to the red green and blue and then we'll see everything I forgot to change that back <laughs> so we're now we're looking at red green blue if we select our roto tool and let's go to the ellipse and let's just draw a nice circle. I'm going to hold the shift key and draw a complete perfect circle. So now we have a perfect circle. We'll put it around my face here. And then we want to go to, so we can look and see, go back to our alpha channel. So this is what we've drawn under our roto. But if we look at the red, green, blue, we'll see everything. We see our entire, what everything's looking like. And then back on the roto, go to general. And we'll click this under output, select pre-multiply. And that's going to just allow just whatever we've drawn to uh, create kind of like a mask. So everything else is just going to be uh, black. Or actually, everything else is transparent, isn't it? Everything's transparent except for just uh, the, the picture. So we're kind of like masking out the part of this picture that we want to see. And we can then animate this. So if we go to, go to like transform, we can uh, go to set keyframe on this translate uh, under the roto. And then if we move this, so we have a keyframe at one, if we go down to 20, frame 20, and then just drag and move this down, it'll just, it'll play, it'll go down and animate down there. If we go to frame 40 and move it over here to like look right at the fish. So now we've got this animation where it starts uh, at my face, it animates or it kind of goes down, and so it's this mask that we've created, and we can go and we can change the shape and kind of feather it, create a nice little feather, so it kind of is more of like it has a soft edge, and we can change the shape if we want to. We can change and make it like, you know, a little bit different, and then it'll change into there because this spline keyframe is a. Uh, uh, it is keyframed was already keyframed by default, so that's why it's animating and changing into there. Um, something else we can do: let's delete this roto. 
let's draw in a new roto and let's go I'm gonna hit the control key and drag it over top so it just ties right in here to our workflow let's do the same thing now let's do an ellipse I hit hold the shift key and make it a nice complete perfect circle but now let's uh, let's actually so hit pre multiply um, let's actually move the picture the background so with the picture selected uh, I'm gonna go to transform and create a transform node here and now we're gonna keyframe the translate on the transform node before the roto not after and we'll set a keyframe oh whoops we set a keyframe at 44 and then we'll go back to keyframe one and we'll have it we'll have it be uh, down here at the fish oh wait other way around control Z we want the roto to stay there we want the image to be moved so to do that uh, we actually move it like this and then go back so now what we have is it's going to start at frame one at the fish and it's going to pan over to me <laughs> and if we want in like 20 we can do it kind of how we did before we can have it go down to here and then pan over so it's like yeah there we go so if we output this it's going to look like we're going to see 1920 by 1080 or actually it resized it to the size of the image but we're going to see the full image and then it's just going to be this the uh, the video will be the size of the full image, but the part we're seeing is just going to look like this. We're going to see a circle with a little thing. So now the picture is moving behind, and the circle is kind of staying still static there. Uh, yeah, so that's a little basic intro to the Roto tool. You can have multiple Rotos. You can have um, you can actually trace. So if we if we get rid of this, let's get rid of the transform. Let's get rid of all this. Um, let's draw in, let's do another roto. And we can actually go and we can look like just very quickly and crudely we'll just trace around me. So I could spend a little more time making this look nicer, but we'll just do this. So maybe you've done this before in like GIMP or Photoshop where you um, like replace the background, right? So this is kind of what kind of what we're doing here. So uh, we go to uh, pre-multiply. So now we have just myself selected. And then if we get, um, let's grab like a merge node. Uh, right here. And then we'll have this be the, we'll have this with the roto be the background. No, we'll have that be the foreground. And then the background, I'm going to grab like the, uh, Let's do a shader toy. So I've got the shader toy as the background. And then we'll come over to shader toy. The options, we'll go to this, click this triangle to get more options. We'll go to the presets and go to source. Um, oops. And let's do, let's do like these disks here. So we've, we're showing these disks. Um, oh, we're not tied to our viewer yet. So now we have these disks as the background. You see that? So if I disable it, hit the D key. So right now it's just like kind of black, but now we have this these disks showing here, which is like an animated sort of uh, moving disks in the background. So kind of an interesting effect. And then we can like move if we want to do a transform. Let's transform with the roto. So while the roto is selected, if we add a transform, again, we can transform this. And we'll set our keyframe at one, and then we'll move. Uh, let's just move me and the roto kind of over here uh, by frame forty. And so now we have it like this. Like, oops, why is that not working? So the transform is happening after the roto. It should be transforming me. Right? So I'm moving in there. That's a keyframe. Oh, did I not set it? So there's a keyframe, and this is the first one. So now it should work. So now, I, yeah, I just didn't set my keyframe properly. So now if we play, so now I'm kind of, you know, going down there. And then we can do at like 50, we could do like a scale. So we can keyframe the scale also. And so we can like make it, you know, 
know, something like this, and then go back down at 70, just playing around. And so now we have it kind of doing just some weirdness. <laughs> but it kind of gives you the an idea of what you can do. So that's, that's all happening because of this roto. If I disable the roto, then it's just, you know, nothing. It'll still move the picture. It'll still do that, but it's with the whole image and not that rotoed out you know, masked out portion that I was wanting. So, I hope you found this informative. I kind of rushed through that. Um, but we'll play with Roto more. We'll do maybe some green screen chroma key in the next video. And we'll just keep, you know, hacking away at learning how to use Natron. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.